Gentlemen of the of the media, on Monday, November 10th, 2014, I prorogued the 10th Parliament of Guyana. My reason for making that decision is worth repeating here. It was to preserve the life of the 10th Parliament, so as to provide the 10th Parliament specifically the political parties therein, another opportunity to address the finality, the many issues that had yet failed to have full parliamentary consideration. You would recall I made mention of the following, anti-money laundering and financing countering of terrorism legislation, the Amida Falls and renewable energy in Guyana education legislation, telecommunication legislation, financial expenditure of the public funds. The parliamentary opposition reacted disappointedly and sought to discredit my initiative, even to claim it was unconstitutional. I wrote the leader of the opposition. I addressed the nation. I hosted meetings with stakeholders. My administration more than justified the resort to prorogation. Additionally, I pointed out the opportunity for prorogation offered to improve the enfranchisement of Guyanese yet to be registered even after the completion of the sixth round of continuous registration by GCOM. <clears throat> During this time, the Guyanese people were exposed to an opposition position that rejected dialogue. Four days ago, to be precise, on December 2nd, 2014, the leader of the opposition responded to my letter of invitation of November 18, 2014, declining attendance at my proposed dialogue. I had to concede that my objectives for prorogation were unlikely to be achieved. It logically followed that other options to prorogation had to be considered. Those options I would enumerate. One, return to the 10th parliament, or two, general elections. The return to parliament was not an option I exercised on November 10th. My judgment was it meant business as usual, including the debate on the opposition's no confidence motion in my administration. I am of the opinion that since then, very little has changed, and the opposition leader, David Granger's rejection of my invitation to dialogue has cemented my reasoning. Should the parliamentary political parties return to the 10th parliament to business as usual? Where, where there is no productive productivity, and, uh, and especially during this Christmas season? Consideration of that option has occupied me since I received the disappointing news of Mr. Granger's rejection of dialogue. I have considered and I have consulted, and this is my resolve. We will go to elections. I have also since written to the international community, alerting them on the possibility of early elections and the desire for them to field observers, observer missions. However, we will not disrupt and damper the Christmas spirit with the evident purposeless 
purposeless parliamentary debates. Early in the new year, I intend to announce a further step towards the direction of general and regional elections in Guyana. In the meantime, I will be consulting GCOM on its readiness and Guyanese can get on with the business of having an enjoyable Christmas. Thank you very much. Good morning, sir. Adam Harris, Prime News. Sir, there are obviously implications for the budget, which should be due out by April 30. As a result of your impend impending decision, sir, what can we expect about the nation's business? Well, in all of these circumstances, the Constitution provides how and the, 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 the laws of our country provide how spending of public funds are done within this period of time. And I can assure you that whatever we do, we will do it within the law, within our constitution, how it allows us to spend money. That will be how it will be done. Uh, Gordon Mosley, News Source. Mr. President, could you say when you intend to inform uh, the National Assembly through the clerk of a dissolving of the National Assembly to lead the way for elections? Well, that, that would be my um, prerogative to decide when, but I've said in my statement, if you were listening, that mm -hmm. all in the new year I will do this. Okay. Uh, Mr. President, Marcel Thomas, Starbuck News. The PSE has written and said that they have a plan um, where one month is given for dialogue between the opposition and government to see if anything can be met. Was your decision to call a date in early, early in the new year, was it in any way influenced by this? No. I think Mr. Granger has rejected that already, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it was... My, my decision to go to the new year was to not to disrupt the Guyanese people's Christmas. That is why I, I've decided to go for the new year. And you don't believe that Mr. Granger will in any way um, accept this PSC's proposal? Well, I have, I, in fact, I've heard that he's already rejected it. That I, don't, I, I just heard that I just came back from the interior. Um, but my information that I've had that he has rejected that. Oh. Mr. President, Vanessa Narengan Chronicle, will your consultations between now and the new year, um, how, what can we expect from the private sector, uh, your talks with the private sector and all that? Well, my door is never closed to consulting, to talking with uh, legitimate stakeholders within the society. And for sure, if the private sector wants to meet with me or I want to talk with them as they exchange positions, I definitely would invite them if I want to talk with them and meet with them if they so want to meet with me. Right. And as it relates to the first question about spending, there's been allegations from the APNU and the AFC about um, misuse of public funds. Clearly that, that is that, uh, clearly that, that that's not um, reality. How we spend money goes with our laws. As I said before in the earlier press conference to you, prorogation didn't give me the power to spend money as I would like in our society or to pass laws that I would have liked. If that was the case, I would have assured you I would have passed the anti-money laundering bill and the other legi pieces of legislation that are pending that I want to pass badly. Mm -hmm. and if that, has, that has been the reason for me to prorogue the parliament to try to have discussions on these. Mr. President, Paul Moore from NCN News. Um, both elections are, are important. Um, could you give us a picture in terms of whether you think 
local government elections will be held within the new year as well? Well, it obviously, I mean, at one time we all had hoped that it could have come before the general election, but events has conspired to knock that, out, that option out, and it will have to come after the general election. So when we win the next elections, I will try to make it as early as possible. Mr. Yes. President, Dennis Chabral, Demerari of Sir, do you envisage uh, elections being held before the next budget? It's quite possible. That is quite possible. Yeah. And sir, uh, how early in the new year could we have that? Yes. My turn now, sir. Uh, could you indicate to us uh, how early, within the first month, the sec by the end of the second month? Very early. I don't want to, uh, to because of, of some of my own itinerary, I don't want to tie myself down to a date, but the earliest option, the earliest time I will be, I will be ready to do that. By your New Year's speech? Yeah? Quite likely. By your New Year's speech? Quite possibly, too. <laughs> Sir, at present, your government is in negotiations with some investors. And there is sometimes this belief that elections looms, negotiations should cease. Exactly what is going to happen with those investors who are now seeking to have uh, deals with the government? What, do you have anything specific in mind? Any, any specific thing? Well, we had the Cien Sun Hotel. Sun. 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 See, it's. <laughs> We had the hotel, and then we had yeah, the Chinese, who, past, uh, and they were, the Chinese were still talking to you about the Deepwater Harbor, sir. And there was another deal where um, you were negotiating with investors for the new Demerara Harbor Bridge, sir. No, a lot of those things are in very early stages. I don't think um, in, in a short while that those things would, would come to any type of conclusion. Uh, but let me put it this way. My, my attitude will be, as long as I believe it's in the interest of Guyana and the Guyanese people, we're going to negotiate with it. I have every confidence of winning the next election, so I have no fear that we will continue to, to with, with, the, with the dialogue and the discussion and the agreements as we have them. Good afternoon, sir. Travis Chase, Nightly News. Uh, the last time I asked you this question, you said that the PPP um, has never stopped reaching out to its supporters, given the situation in Parliament. Since you're very confident of winning the next elections, how has the party been doing in terms of reaching out to its supporters? I think very, very well. Very, very well we have been doing. Um, uh, a lot of our party leaders have been out, and all the reports that I have been, I myself have been out, I've been out for a little while, for a few days actually. And um, I can tell you that our response is very, very good. Thanks. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.